What's up, guys? It's your boy DJ coming at you with a late light, late night uh, short review. But good information for those of you who are looking to uh, add more power to your e-bike, especially the small e-bikes like this. I think I got some pretty good information after thinking it out for a while. Um, I'll try to make it short and just get to the points. This is a Swagtron EB5 Pro Plus electric folding a bicycle, 14 inch wheels, 200, 250 watt motor, geared motor that is, 36 volt. Came with a, uh, I believe it's a, an 8 amp hour battery. Okay. Well, I wanted to upgrade it. I got this bike again. I say this all the time. Not to ride as a bicycle, but as a mini moped. That's right. Moped. Pedal in a motor. It's a moped. Um, modern day moped, that is. Um, so, I went on the search about how to go about doing this. Um, and you have to do, do a bit of research to see what controllers will work and won't work with the type of hub motor that you have. So, after narrowing everything down, I went to Grin Tech and uh, they had a good selection of controllers. So, I decided to go with the Base Runner Controller. I believe it goes up to 60 volts. Um, so, that's what I did. And I received that controller like last week sometime. And I just recently installed the controller. Uh, so far, it's working really good. Um, so far. I did have an episode with the controller, but it wasn't really the controller. I have the controller located right in here, in that part of the down tube. And I had removed the uh, heat sink off the controller just to try to make it a smaller package. Although it's plenty small to go in there. I was just trying to make it more, even more slimline. But anyway, so at the time I was doing my test, the temperatures were much warmer, like 80-something degrees maybe. And the controller did overheat. But I blame that on me, not the controller. So, um, uh, I had to do another test, which I did uh, today on uh, the controller with this e-bike here. Um, again... Just to let you know, uh, I'm running a 48 volt uh, battery, and uh, this controller I think it goes up to like 1500 watts or maybe 1200. No, no, no. I'm sorry, 700 watts. The program that I have it on, it only peaks out at like 700 watts. But anyway, I'd have to say that uh, the controller performed very well. Again, the controller I'm using is the Base Runner. From Grin Technologies out of Canada. They have a good selection of uh, aftermarket parts for e-bikes and controllers and hub motors and whatnot. So I went with their profile that they use for their Bafang G310 motor, 311, 310 motor. And now I went with that profile and it started, uh, the motor started right up. You know, like the controller was made for it. Like it <laughs> did really well. It was very easy to do. Hang on, somebody's trying to call me. They're going to have to wait. Uh, hang on one second. Let me put on the do not disturb thing. Oh, it is on. <laughs> okay. But anyway. Uh, what was I saying? But anyway, um, just a, something for you guys to think about. And that is something for you guys to think about. And that is using a smaller motor to achieve the 20 mile an hour speed limit. If you're t like me, the type of person that wants to obey the laws and go by the speed limits. I know a lot of people, they get e-bikes, they want to make them go 35 miles an hour, or 28 miles, even 25 miles an hour, whatever. You can do that, do what you want, but if you're a type of person that want to be, you want to be compliant with the law and just do 20 miles an hour, it's even easier because you don't have the pressure to try to make a high-speed bike, <laughs> okay? And here's what I found this interesting, okay? What, I, what I'm discovering about uh, hub motors and whatnot. As you guys know, you check my other videos. I have a, a project that I did. Again, I use Grin Technologies. I use another one of their controllers. I can't remember the name of it. But if you check my archive in my videos, you'll find it. I did a, 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 a um, uh, overhaul of the uh, the Razor uh, EcoSmart sub scooter with a, it, it's Razor's new EcoSmart with a hub motor. But anyway, it's like a 350 watt hub motor. I use one of Grin Technologies uh, controllers for that, and when using that that controller uh, on that scooter, worked great. Everything worked great. 
Uh, the, the the amp hour consumption for that motor was pretty much one amp hour per mile. So if I went three miles, three amp hours were usually consumed. If I went 10 miles, 10 amp hours were consumed. And, and if I like rode it to work, which is like 16 miles away, 16 amp hours were consumed. Okay? 16 amp hours. And my speeds are about the same amount of speeds I'm doing here. Uh, 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 um, anywhere from... Uh, 15 to 20 mile an hour usually around 16 17 miles well 17 18 mile an hour uh, uh, right, right around that range but anyway this is what's interesting again with my uh, Razer EcoSmart sub scooter <laughs> project at 48 volts same amount of same battery matter of fact matter of fact that's the battery out of the EcoSmart at 48 volts the Eco, EcoSmart was consuming one amp hour per mile, and sometimes a little bit more than that, you know, on that trick. Well, using uh, the same battery with a smaller motor, the difference is the EcoSmart has a direct drive 350 watt motor. This little thing here has a 250 watt geared hub motor, so geared hub motors are more efficient. They're lighter. They don't have the mass that a... Uh, that a planetary, you know, direct drive motor has. They don't have the mass, so they use less energy to get them going, you know. So anyway, it's amazing with this thing here, the same trip, the same trip, guys, that I make on, made on the EcoSmart, that I use, what, an amp hour per mile, 16 miles, so that's like 16 amp hours, the majority of the battery, and that's a 20 amp hour battery. The same trip, if you look on my, on my display here, You'll see it, 7.153, again, amp hours. So I'm using almost half the power on this EB5 Pro Plus 250-watt hub motor, half the power that I'm using, that I was using with the direct drive motor that's a 16-inch 16 16 wheel scooter Direct drive uh, hub motor uh, uh, is what was powering those 16 inch wheels, and this is using half the power. I'm getting there just as quick or quicker uh, with this vehicle. And yes, I pedal sometimes, pretty much only when I go up super steep hills. Most of the time, I'm just uh, throttling along on this anyway. And it does, it just does really good. It does really good. Um, so, what I'm saying is, guys, for those of you who want a commuter, uh, uh, e-bike or scooter I would highly consider the hub motor <laughs> okay think about what I'm telling you now this little 250 watt hub motor is really a 36 volt motor setup I'm over volting it to 48 volts but I'm not abusing it you know the top speed on this bike at 36 volt was 17 miles an hour but I couldn't maintain that 17 I'd hit it for maybe 10 seconds, then it dropped down 16 or 15 miles an hour. I overvolted over this bike, bike to because I want to be able to be able to consistently go 17 to 18 to 20 mile an hour. And overvolting this Swagtron EB5 Pro Plus bike with the base runner controller from Grin Technologies, I achieved, I achieved that goal. You know, I can go a consistent. 17 to 8, anywhere between 17 to 20 miles an hour with this setup. It tops out at about 22, 23 miles an hour. Again, I'm trying to be compliant with the laws. So when you're trying to be compliant with the laws, you have a lot less pressure to go fast. And that's something some of you guys might want to consider. You know, uh, it takes me an hour to get to work too. Uh, it's like 16 miles away. It takes me right in an hour to get to work. 16.5 miles, something like that. Right at an hour to get there on this setup. And, and that's about the same amount of time it took me to get there on the Razer EcoSmart. Uh, and it's, again, it, it was, it's a 16-inch wheel. I still have it. It's a 16-inch wheel scooter. But I'm using the same power source. You know, again, with a smaller hub, geared hub motor, I used 7.155 amp hours with the Razer Eco, EcoSmart. 16 miles, I would have used up to like 17 
amp hours of power. Over half. I mean, uh, uh, um, this is basically using, you know, even a little less than half the power of the Razor, Razor EcoSmart. Because at times, when I'm doing uh, higher speed, like 17, 18 miles an hour, the EcoSmart would shoot through the battery a little faster, <laughs> you know. So, so I'm definitely using uh, half the power and amp hours that the other scooter was using. So I think that's very good information for those of you who want to have an efficient, long-range vehicle. 20 amp hours is considered to be a large battery by any account on any bike, any e-bike, okay? It doesn't matter if it's a 500-watt e-bike, geared hub motor a 20 amp hour battery is considered large so imagine having a 20 amp hour battery battery like i do on the back there and that little uh a bag there on a 250 watt uh a geared hub motor over voltage to 48 volts so it jumps all the way up to like 730 to 750 watts uh using the base runner using the uh, uh um using the, the fang G310 motor profile. So think about that, guys. Smaller can be better. And that was that's why one reason I got this bike. That's how I was thinking. I was like, well, you know, if I keep the legal speeds of 17 to 20 miles an hour, I don't have the pressure of trying to go super fast. I'm legal. I don't have to worry about getting any tickets. I'm not breaking any laws. And I'm I'm uh 20 miles an hour is plenty fast to me to be on a bicycle. That's how I feel. Why not do it as efficiently as possible by using a geared hub motor on these smaller e-bikes? And this bike here is a champ. I'll tell anybody, and I have several e-bikes, guys. You guys know if you see my videos. I've got some very high-end e-bikes, even in the 300, I mean, 3400 I mean, $4,100 range. I've got one my mountain bike. You know, I got that back in 2014. Very expensive. But uh, all the way down to a, uh, uh, a Brompton uh, folding bike. I have that that I converted to an e-bike. But I enjoy riding this little thing right here. It's very simple. One gear. One gear. <laughs> you know, I don't have to worry about shifting gears or derailers, all that stuff. Nope. That's if you want to have a electric moped, this is the one to go with. Okay? I'll try to stop babbling. I can't say enough good things about it. At the same time, right now, I'm very impressed with the base runner controller. Very impressed. But we'll see what happens when it, the weather warms up to 80, 90 degrees. And, and will that controller still uh, run at cool temperatures? Because right now, earlier today, I, I, when I went to work, the, the, the controller only got up to like 68 degrees, something like that, inside the down tube. But it was 58 degrees outside. Very cool. Okay. So... I can't yet brag too much about the controller as far as thermal rollback and whether or not it will shut down and go into thermal rollback until I can test it on a normal, warm, sunny day when the temperature is 80 to 90 degrees. Then I'll know the truth about the base runner controller, whether it can be concealed or not inside uh, the down tube of this e-bike. Or am I going to have to, to uh, mount the base runner externally on the bike? Time will tell. When it gets warm, we'll find out. Okay, I think I covered all the important stuff uh, in this video archive that I'm make, really making for myself, but I do choose to share it. And because uh, I, I think I got some good ideas for those people people that are into e-bikes and electric scooters. I like them all. I have a good time with them all. You know, and I, I tell you guys again, you don't have to pay a lot of money to get you a long range e-bike. Unless you're just too embarrassed to ride these little e-bikes like this. Me, personally, I don't really care. I don't really care. I'm having a good time. It's cheap. This bike here is only 550 bucks. The base runner controller is about $180 to $190. So far, I'm very happy with it. I have to give me an on and off switch on there. I'm going to refine everything, too. And what's kind of cool is, now that I know two trips on this bike, and I've only used... Six amp hours. I'm, I know that I can downsize on my uh, e-bike battery. I have a 20 amp hour battery in there. So what I'm going to do next time, I'm going to run, ride this bike to work using my 14 amp hour, 14 amp hour, 48 volt uh, battery. Okay. 
I'm going to use that next time. And, uh, and I'll, I'll save some weight and some space. And actually, that battery, I, can, I have a really nice, neat battery bag that I can mount it off my handlebars if I want to. And use that back rack, bike rack for storage or whatever. All right, guys, I'm going to stop babbling. This video is long enough. It's 15 minutes. Uh, if you choose to listen to this video, there's good information if you go back into it. And, uh, and I'm, I'm going to be doing uh, continual testing with this base runner controller because I, it's not enough people out there doing this. I mean, I wanted to hear more reviews on the base runner and the phase runner controllers, but I can hardly find any. Most of the videos that are done on these, these controllers are just the short videos that Grin Technologies did. You know, but it's nice to have somebody that's actually using them, which is what I'm doing. So this video here was really about the base runner and how efficient uh, a smaller geared hub motor can be as opposed to getting a bigger bike. So, all right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Peace.